to my channel. I'm Victoria and I talk all things Leafs hockey from Scotland. Today it is week two of my weekly Leafs analysis where I break down all the games from the previous week and sum up my thoughts. This past week the Leafs had a very quiet schedule. Two games, Wednesday and Saturday, both at home. The first one against the LA Kings and the second one against the New York Rangers. After a decently successful first week, the Leafs were definitely looking to keep up this momentum this week and it was definitely a mixed bag. Obviously two games, tiny sample size, but Let's talk about them for a minute, shall we? So as I said, Leafs at home against the LA Kings on Wednesday and the Leafs win 6-2. The Leafs had a really good game. Even though the LA Kings are arguably the easier team of this week because the New York Rangers are, I would argue, one of the strongest teams in the whole league, the Kings are still really good and they're second in the Pacific Division right now. So definitely still a contending team. So I still really feel good that the Leafs were able to get this win over them. The Leafs kicked off the scoring just under seven minutes into the game with a goal from none other than Bobby McMahon. It was assisted by Domi and McCabe and that, that line has been very solid this week and has probably been the standout line of the entire team in this past week of NHL hockey for the Leafs. Austin Matthews soon found the back of the net soon after, getting his first goal of the season and so officially all of the core group have now scored. I was very happy to see Austin scoring a goal because people of course were already talking about how, how could a 69 goal scorer from last season not have scored in the entire first week of the season but he is now back to his scoring ways. He actually got goals in both games this week the only Leafs player to do so but I was very happy to see him get his first goal of the season. Then the first period actually ended 3-0 Leafs as Bobby McMahon once again finding his stride hits a wrist shot home at the 17-12 mark and it is 3-0 Leafs and I am comfortable about this game. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> the second period continued to yield more success for the Leafs. Morgan Riley got a tip in marking his first goal of the season as well which we love to see. I'm a big Morgan Riley fan. He is my favourite defenceman on the Leafs. I adore him and so I was very happy to see him get his first goal as well. But even more extraordinarily, Nylander scores which isn't that extraordinary in itself. However, he scored it on the power play. Yes, the Leafs first power play goal of the season. It took them four games to find one after I have lost count how many power play opportunities they have had. But finally, Nylander was able to score in the power play which feels like a rare gem at this point because the Leafs power play continues to be a problem yet again. We were saying this last season, we were saying this last postseason, I said this last week and I'm saying it again today. The Leafs power play, definitely an issue. However, Nylander did manage to score on the power play in the game against LA. And speaking of power plays, in the third period of that game, John Tavares also managed to score on the man advantage, making it two power play goals, making them 50% on the power play for that game. And I was finally thinking, have they made something click? Is it clicking now? Because the power play was not going well. But as we'll see in the New York Rangers game, it doesn't stay that way, unfortunately. Ironically, the Leafs were actually outshot by the Kings in that game, and usually it's the other way around. Usually the Leafs are the ones outshooting the other team, and then they sometimes end up losing despite outshooting them. I'm looking at you, Montreal Canadiens, season opener game. <laughs> so that was three straight wins for the Leafs, a really dominant first period for the Leafs in this game. The second line was absolutely outstanding. Bobby McMahon in particular was the best player of this game and I will die on that hill. It wasn't a perfect performance from the bottom six, but still an all round great game for Toronto. You can't complain much when you win 6-2. I was very happy with the way that the Leafs looked. They were really solid and so it seemed like three straight wins, the Leafs have got this. Then we get to Saturday, Hockey Night in Canada. Leafs are at home against the New York Rangers and they lose 4-1. Now in case anyone doesn't know, my like bucket list matchup that I want to see is the Leafs and the Rangers because the Rangers are my like little soft spot team. I actually really like them when they're not playing the Leafs. And so one of my dream matchups is to see the Leafs and the Rangers, specifically at Madison Square Gardens, but this was obviously at home, but still, it is usually my favourite matchup. I love Leafs-Rangers games. I love an original six matchup 
But this game fell incredibly flat for me. The LA game made you feel like you were on top of the world. The Rangers game, not so much. <laughs> now I will say, this game did feel more like a 2-1 game rather than a 4-1 game to me because the two latter goals from the Rangers were empty netters and so it was 2-1 up until the final minute of the game. So it does feel more like the scoreline was realistically 2-1 but that's not the case. It was quite a flat performance from the Leafs overall, I will say. I felt like this was the flattest game that they've had and unfortunately it was probably my least favourite game that they've played so far this season. Of course we are only five games in and so that's a little bit dramatic to say but it definitely, it just fell a little flat for me. Saturday Night Hockey, original six matchup, I was really excited for it and I just felt like the game was just lacking something. I felt like the Leafs were lacking something on Saturday. The first period only saw one goal and that came from Alexis Lafreniere. It was Leafs mistakes that ultimately led up to it. Uh, the first period overall was pretty defensive and I felt like the Leafs looked good in the first period and then even when the period ended it was 1-0, I still felt like the Leafs looked pretty good. I liked the way that they looked that period and it was overall a reasonably uneventful first period but I did like the way that the Leafs were playing in that first. The second period saw the Rangers make it 2 nothing with a wrist shot from Chris Kreider. Once again there were some Leafs defensive issues here. Right before the goal happened there were two Rangers players that were kind of open at the net. Morgan Riley was standing right in between the two of them but he was marking neither of them and as I've just said I'm a Morgan Riley defender but that was pretty bad. He left two guys wide open. It was pretty obvious they were going to score on that. Anthony Stollart, I thought, was still really good in this game and I do not at all <laughs> blame him because at the end of the day there was only two goals that got past him and I think there were defensive issues on both and there were mistakes from the Leafs that led to both of those. Going into the third period pretty quickly, three minutes 40 in, Austin Matthews reignites the fire and he makes it a one goal game. And so it's 2-1. It's 2-1 and we're chugging through the last period and I'm convinced I'm like, they can score here. They had some amazing chances. There were some really good scoring opportunities but they just ultimately couldn't get past the Sturkin. And then the final minute of the game was just an absolute nightmare. The Leafs pull the goalie, Kreider manages to get an empty net goal exactly on the 19 minute mark and then very quickly, 46 seconds later, Panarin also scores an empty net goal. And so a one goal game turns into a 4-1 loss for the Leafs very quickly. That final period was just absolutely a nightmare. I think it really showed that offensively the Leafs were struggling a bit. I feel like they weren't making the kind of shots they had to to get past the Sturkin in that game. But more so defensively, there were definitely some issues and that was really, really exposed as soon as they pulled the goaltender. Two empty net goals. It just wasn't good. The Leafs did outshoot the Rangers 35 to 29, but once again, what was the weak link here? The power play. They had three power play opportunities, they scored on none of them once again, and the Leafs are now tied with Tampa for the fourth worst power play in the entire league with just a 12.5 efficiency rate. It's just really not good. With the power play units they have available, it's quite embarrassing that a power play unit with Marner, Tavares, Nylander, Matthews, Oliver ekman Larson can't score. This issue has been ongoing since last season. They did change the power play coach. They now have Mark Savardin who was brought in to sort of resolve this problem but they are still seeing the same problems with the power play. So many opportunities that have just gone completely missed once again. So what do they do to improve the power play? I am no power play expert as everyone knows. But I'm just wondering, like, Pacioretty has been a healthy scratch this week and so I'm just wondering, like, could they perhaps move him onto the second power play unit? I'm wondering if they could move someone out of there, maybe he'd be able to make an impact or maybe you move John Tavares down from the first unit to the second. I don't know, could those changes make any difference? I I'm not certain but they, they need to do something because there is a complete missing link here and it's definitely not clicking still as of yet. And even though their power play was obviously quite successful in the LA game, it was back to just the same old, same old problem as soon as they were playing the Rangers. So it's definitely still a missing link for this team. Now the New York Rangers are a fantastic team. I really think that they are Stanley Cup contenders for this season. And I get it. Shesterkin is a wonderful goaltender. He's also in the final year of his contract. And so more than ever, he'll be looking to push up his own value. However, 
the shots that the Leafs were kind of putting at Shesterkin, most of them were pretty routine shots. A lot of them were point blank. There was nothing really too much overall that was challenging Shesterkin and to get past the goaltender as good as him you need to be a little bit more creative than that. The Leafs didn't get goalied in this game. Shesterkin had a great performance, I don't deny that. However, the Leafs were really not challenging him in the way that was needed in order to get the puck past him. My standout players for this game, definitely Austin Matthews. He was the only one that was able to make the score sheet. I felt like he looked much better this week than he did last week. I felt like he was really, really solid all week long. Matthew Nyes also looked really good in the game against the Rangers and Stall Arts was still decent. I still think he had a solid performance and at the end of the day with him in net it was only 2-1. So overall it was of course a mixed bag for the Leafs. It's always sad to lose an original six matchup but I just I didn't love the Leafs performance in that Rangers game as much. The Leafs record is now 3-2-0 which I know is absolutely fine. It's October, we're five games in, no one is freaking out. However it would have been nice to see a better performance in that Rangers game than I think what we saw. I feel like it was quite a flat performance from the Leafs and even though the LA game they looked really really good, I really wanted to see them perform better against the Rangers. I didn't necessarily have them picked to win it, um, but it would have been nice of course to have seen maybe a little a little more creative offensive output and shots on goal and maybe a little less defensive errors because the Leafs errors really helped the Rangers with those first two goals. So it was definitely very much a mixed bag this week but they are doing absolutely fine. Currently the Leafs are fourth in the Atlantic division but of course this is a very small sample size and they've also played less games than Florida and Boston who are the top two currently. As I'm filming this the Leafs actually play tonight so I'm gonna get this video up as quickly as I possibly can for you guys. They play Tampa tonight, really important game of course, really important. It's October, Victoria calm down but they're, they're right next to each other in the division and the Leafs could jump right up to second place in the Atlantic if they win tonight so I'm gonna stop talking for now so I can go and get this video out as quickly as possible because we do have a game tonight, of course. Comment down below, what did you think of the Leafs' performance this week in the LA and Rangers games? Leave your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more content. And I'll be back soon with more Leafs hockey chats from across the pond. Bye, guys.